So President Trump has called on his congresswoman, on Congresswoman Ilan Omar to resign over anti-Semitic tweets. Under pressure from party leadership, the Minnesota Democrat apologized for claiming that money is the reason why U.S. politicians support Israel. The president discussed her remarks ahead of yesterday's cabinet meeting. After first talking about immigration, he then made this transition. One other thing I might want to say is that anti-Semitism has no place in the United States Congress. And Congressman Omar is terrible, what she said. And I think she should either resign from Congress or she should certainly resign from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. What she said is so deep-seated in her heart that her lame apology, and that's what it was, it was lame, and she didn't mean a word of it, uh, was just not appropriate. Not, yeah, deep-seated, deep that, that, that uh, old uh, sort of racist uh, belief that Jews are just about money. I mean, you hear people talking at times about Jews and money, and yeah, whether it's in politics or whether it's in business, people say, you know, Jews are just, oh, they're great negotiators. I mean, obviously, Mika, that's something that, from what the president just said there, it's something that Donald Trump would never fall victim to himself, Never, right? never, never. Um, I mean, I just want to point out that the tweet was horrible, and, and you want to look at sort of her, her history of comments, if there are others that are similar, and you want to try and understand where this came from. It wasn't good. But the hypocrisy is extremely easy to point out. You may remember the president was also criticized during the 2016 campaign for playing into Jewish stereotypes about money. Here he is speaking to the Republican Jewish coalition in 2015. I'm in a different position than the other candidates because I'm the one candidate. I don't want any of your money. I want your support, but I don't want your money. Again, uh, I don't want your money, therefore you're probably not going to support me because, stupidly, you want to give money. Trump doesn't want money. I really believe the Iran deal. Look, I'm a negotiator like you folks. We're negotiators. We don't build gas stations in the middle of, as you know, Afghanistan for 43 million. How many think they could have done it for less? Would you raise your hands, please? You want to renegotiate deals? We, some of us renegotiate deals. I would say about 99.9. Is there anybody that doesn't renegotiate deals in this room? This room negotiates. I want to renegotiate this room. Perhaps more than any room I've ever spoken to. <laughs> Maybe more. And we just, just a one, one, yeah. one Jewish money joke after another Jewish money joke after another Jewish money joke. I mean, he just, he actually lapped the Congresswoman about five times there. Yeah, he definitely so did. So I'm just wondering, is Kevin McCarthy going to call for his resignation because nope. I've heard Kevin McCarthy Steve, criticize uh, that yeah. again remember the star of David picture do we have mm -hmm. the star of David mm -hmm. picture because when that went up and they were uh, they were peddling in in just clear anti-semitism ugly anti-semitism I didn't hear Kevin McCarthy or any Republicans I didn't hear Mitch McConnell call for Donald Trump to, no. to, to, to step down I mean it's this is I, Mika, the hypocrisy is so extraordinarily thick here. Well, and uh, again, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, deny what happened, and I think Democrats should talk about it and deal with it. Of course, uh, Trump's infamous remarks about good people being among the white supremacists at that deadly rally in Charlottesville in 2017. Remember that? Not to mention his ban on Muslims, his comments about s-hole countries which was just incredible and his suggestion that california's immigration policies allow for breeding and the infestation of crime eugene scott you have a new piece out in the washington post entitled ilan omar and steve king reacted to criticism very differently why that matters how did they react differently what are you finding well, we know that when Democratic leadership, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, called on Representative Omar to uh, apologize, that the representative did, and did so relatively immediately. Uh, when uh, Minority Leader uh, McCarthy called on Steve King, who has a history of making uh, comments that are sympathetic to those who are white supremacists or white nationalists, to apologize, not only did he not apologize, he doubled down. And very recently, we know he's put 
uh, led a fight to get back on his committees. And he's taken that cue, one could argue, from the president himself, who has mm -hmm. no history of apologizing, despite critiquing how other people apologize, in part because what he is aware of most is what his political opponents say uh, that are problematic and not he and his own tribe. And he does that because his party members, uh, the base, will not hold him accountable in ways that the Democratic Party will hold people like Representative Omar and even Nancy Pelosi accountable. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and they did, Willie. Of course, the Democrats did hold the Congresswoman accountable. And obviously, if she makes another anti-Semitic statement, uh, then, then I would be shocked if she weren't kicked off the, the Foreign Affairs Committee. I do have to say, though, you, you, you listen to all the things that Donald Trump has said, all the racist things that Donald Trump has said. You look at all the, 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 the stereotypes. Donald Trump was steadling, uh, peddling the Jewish stereotypes there. And then Mika talked about Donald Trump saying that our immigration policies uh, uh, lead to breeding right. and infestation. You know, there's so many times where people say, oh, you should never, should never compare anything that any American politician does to what, uh, you know, fascists would do or, or, or what Nazis did. You know, the propaganda, uh, when you start talking about breeding, uh, racist breeding, and you start talking about the infestation of people, uh, of non-white people, I, if, if you don't want me to say that that's something that the Third Reich peddled in, okay, I won't say it. Just go read a book, because that's exactly what they said about Jews. Well, the president was talking in April, last April, about the sanctuary laws in, in California, and Eddie, obviously, President Trump is not the right vessel to come down against sure. religious discrimination. Let's go just go back to the Muslim ban. He wanted an entire religion banned from this country based on the God they worship. But did Nancy Pelosi not have to reckon with the anti-Semitism that was implicit in Congresswoman Omar's tweet? Oh, absolutely. So, look, I think it's... Ex explicit, I yeah, should say. So, I, there are three things, at, at least to my mind. One. Uh, I want to take seriously the reaction of the Jewish community to Representative Omar's claims, right, or her, her tweet. Yeah. Uh, and, our, and to take seriously the fact that stereotypes about Jews animate uh, our, our, our society and can be belched up at any moment mm -hmm. among any of us. Yeah. But in order to take seriously their, that community's reaction, we also need to take seriously her apology so there's the space so folks can grow. So she said she learned from her Jewish colleagues, she learned from uh, her friends, her, co her constituencies, that she's going to grow. So we have to take her apology seriously if we're going to move forward. That's the first thing. The second thing that's just separate is that every criticism of Israel po Israeli policy or Netanyahu doesn't necessarily mean that it's anti-Semitic. We need to open up space, right, so that we can have the kinds of debates that we need to have. The third thing, and this goes directly to Donald Trump, we are forgetting that what happened to, to in Pittsburgh in that synagogue. Yeah. And folk were invoking George Soros and the Jewish cabal who were funding the caravan and people died for that reason. Yeah. We're forgetting that Trump trades in the language of globalist. That word comes out of a white supremacist, white nationalist community to talk about a Jewish cabal that c controls the country, right? So from globalist to George Soros to what we just saw, this man's lifeblood, right, uh, is, it comes out of flows from hatred and fear. This is his political lifeblood. So the idea that he's going to stand in moral judgment of anyone mm -hmm. smacks of not only hypocrisy, but it's just absolutely ludicrous. And when Donald Trump cannot condemn David Duke. Right. Or he, he pretends can't. like he doesn't know who he is. Remember the tiki marches in, in Charlottesville. Jews will not replace us. That's what they said. And so the idea that he can make this claim and the idea that Kevin McCarthy can stand with, it just makes my blood boil yeah. because it shows, well, it just shows how hypocritical this is and how not, and how, let me say this, and that the fact that they don't take the claims seriously, it's just political fun. Joe. Well, and uh, Republicans have, have been attacking George Soros for some time. Uh, conspiracy theorists. There's always an anti-Semitic smear to it. You, we, we just showed you a, a Kevin McCarthy tweet attacking George Soros about the, uh, around the time of the Pittsburgh slaughter in the synagogue. 
uh, it, it's it's actually it's an absolute game plan of, of course with MAGA and American flag right next to it uh, attacking George Soros I will say though I, 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 I I'm glad to hear Eddie talking about uh, opening the space mm -hmm. of dialogue around the issue and and I agree with him I I, I, I saw a, an article uh, last night from tablet uh, that says uh, the congresswoman has used anti-Semitic tropes and that deserves condemnation, but she also voiced an exceedingly rare willingness to consider her presumptions and to put herself in Jews' shoes. She deserves dialogue and not denunciation. Again, from a Jewish, from tablet, uh, a, 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 a Jewish news service. Um, and I agree with that, Mika, and I, I hope that we can extend that beyond just a discussion about Jewish issues, about Israel. I, I, I applaud Eddie. I think we need to open the space when we're talking about race, when we're talking about gender, when we're talking about all of these issues that seem to ensnarl people uh, and, and really stop, stop the sort of debates that we need to have uh, in, in an age of identity politics. Uh, I think at times identity politics run amok that actually stop us from having these kind of conversations that we so desperately need because in our, in our silence mm -hmm. and in the excesses of identity politics, that is where Donald Trump thrives. Yes, and we'll have the conversations here to our own peril, but we'll have them. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.